as I mentioned, I'm Lauren Santamaro. I'm our campus recruiting manager based in the Chicago office. Um, we have just a few logistics there on the screen for you. So um, we have some prepared remarks. We'll have some Q&A that Caitlin will lead, and then I'll go ahead and take us through any additional questions that um, you all have. You can submit those questions through the Q&A in the bottom right of your screen. There's an opportunity to share questions there. Please send them to Emily Wolowski, and she'll then go ahead and feed them to me. Um, if we don't have a chance to get to your question, there is an email address listed there, careers.mba at atcarney.com, for you to reach out to. And with that, I'll turn it over to Caitlin. Hello. Welcome. I'm Caitlin O'Keefe, and I'm a vice president in our New York office. And I'd like to welcome all of you to our diversity and inclusion webinar. And I especially appreciate that you're joining us on a Friday afternoon. I know those are precious moments. Um, but diversity and inclusion are really core to AT Kearney's value, to AT Kearney's values, and it permeates our culture here in a lot of ways. Um, I've been with the firm for 12 years, so that means I feel like in many ways I've essentially grown up here, and I often feel like I live and breathe AT Kearney culture. And I'm a personal champion for diversity myself, and I'm proud to work for a firm that shares my passion around promoting diversity and inclusion. So um, I'm also a member of our Women's Diversity Network, and I'm an ally for many of our other diversity networks, including our LGBTQ network, which we call PROUD, our African American network, and our Hispanic network. So we'll talk to you a lot more about all of these as part of the webinar. Um, and you may see on video, we have an awesome panel on the line with us today. Uh, and they're all ready to share their experiences around diversity, diversity and inclusion at the firm with you. Um, so I'll give some quick introductions for them, and then we'll give them a chance a little bit later to introduce themselves in more detail. Um, so we have Bachel, who's a principal in our San Francisco office. We have Esther, who's an associate in our San Francisco office. Uh, we have Luis, who's an associate in our Chicago office. And we, I think, is Julianne on the line as well? Yeah, Julie, if she's not on the line yet, Julianne will be joining us. She's an associate in our New York. So um, in just a minute, I'll give everyone the opportunity to, I'll give all the panelists an opportunity to talk a little bit more about themselves, share some fun facts. Um, but we wanted to get started by just telling you about what diversity inclusion really means to us here at AT Carney. Overall, as a firm, we're committed to creating a community where we enable all of our colleagues to feel comfortable bringing their true, authentic self to work. And that's the most important thing that we think about when we talk about diversity. Um, and we think about diversity and inclusion really in three pillars. So the first of which is talent. So it, we want to bring in the best talent. And we also think that when you bring in the best talent and you bring in diversity, you bring in diversity of thought and approach and problem solving and creativity and innovation. Um, and what's also core to us is that once we bring in that talent, we also want to develop and retain it. So you have a long successful career at the firm. Um, the second pillar we think about is culture. So it's really important to us to foster a culture of inclusion. So that means, as I mentioned, allowing employees to bring their true selves to the workplace, feel comfortable both when they're at the client site and when they're in their home offices. Um, and part of that also is keeping the leadership within the firm accountable so that they're also driving and living and breathing uh, the culture that's important to us. And the last piece that we think about are our clients. So we think that diversity allows us to bring a unique proposition to our clients. And you've probably read a lot about why diversity helps companies improve their bottom line. Um, it brings diversity in thought process. It brings better problem-solving approaches to our client. It helps us think about things in a different way and deepen our collaborative relationships with our clients. Um, and at the end, it increases our brand in the marketplace because we create an inclusive team and we have a better connection with our clients. Perfect. Um, and we've been recognized externally for all the work that we do in diversity inclusion. We've made it a priority. It's a priority that starts with our leadership and it cascades all the way down through the firm. So I want to share with you a couple of these because we're quite proud. Um, so we have a few examples here. It's not comprehensive. Um, but starting with women, we are consistently recognized as a top 
place to work for women. Um, and five of our partners have been named by Consulting Magazine's top 25 consulting, uh, consultants, which we think is a great honor. Um, we also have three women who've been recognized as future leaders for Consulting Women's Women Leaders in Consulting Awards. And um, we have five women who have been named Working Mothers of the Year. So um, we find that in general we have a lot of programs for working moms and for women um, to offer them a successful career in consulting. Um, and our, our flexible programs for parents don't only apply to women, they also apply to men as well. So we have a couple of programs like Pathway for Parents and Success with Flex and Work Smart that create some flexibility in career and help enable and drive diversity. Um, in terms of diversity leadership, um, John Kurtz was recognized as a top diversity champion by the Global Diversity List, which is supported by The Economist. Um, and Beth Stagel was recognized as one of our top 50 diversity professionals, by, um, also by the Global Diversity List. Um, and on the LGBTQ front, uh, we were recently recognized as one of the best places to work for, by LGB for LGBTQ equality by the Human Rights Council. We have nine diversity networks at the firm that help support employees. So I mentioned that I'm part of the Women's Network, and um, we have Botchel, Esther, Luis, and Julianne, who are all on the line. They're also part of the network. Um, and the idea behind the networks is that they support, they support you as you go through your career. So they're a support network where you can reach out to like-minded people um, and, tap into, uh, and tap into the network in order to um, for formal, informal and formal mentoring, professional development, and just to sort of make overall connections. So now we'll get to the fun stuff, and um, we'll let the panelists introduce themselves in a little bit more detail, and then we'll get into some questions, and then we'll allow you guys to ask your questions of the panelists as well. Uh, so I'll start, since I've been talking. Um, you already know my name. I went to Northwestern. Um, some of my personal interests, I'm super into crazy fitness trends, and I love um, various boot camp classes and yoga. So like pretty much if there's any kind of weird crazy fitness trend, you can count on me. I'm going to be trying it out. Um, and I also have a guilty pleasure. I love reality TV shows on, Bra on Bravo, especially Below Deck and Real Housewives, which might be embarrassing to admit, but I feel like there's some other people out there who share that with me. Um, my favorite movie is Home Alone. I, I don't know. That movie never gets old for me. I love it. Like, and it's now coming up on the season when we get to watch it, so I'm excited. Uh, and my fun fact is that I just met Jennifer Lopez at dinner on Saturday, actually, because she's in New York filming a movie, and I was at Carbone, and she sat next to me, and she's very nice, um, and she looks great in person. Hey, everyone. This is Julianne. Can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, we can hear you. Uh, hello. Um, so my name is Julian Hellenick. I'm an associate in our, um, our New York office here. I've been with the firm for about two years. Um, some uh, fun stuff about me. So um, I think I mentioned on the slide, I, um, I grew up in Taylor Swift's hometown, and I, I did kind of know who she was when we were kids. Um, she used to sing the national anthem at our high school um, football and basketball games. And she also wrote one of her first album songs about like a boy who went to our high school. So I have like all kinds of like fun stories there. Um, but more about like for me personally, in addition to being admittedly a humongous Taylor Swift fan, um, I love musical theater, uh, politics, fighting the patriarchy. I'm here to represent the Women's Network, shocker, with, with that description. Um, and Legally Blonde is one of my favorite movies, um, partly because I think that it's a feminist masterpiece and I will gladly just like, again, give a, a mini monologue about why that's an amazing movie for women to anyone who is uh, interested, so. <laughs> I like how your first line is just fighting the patriarchy. I didn't notice that before. <laughs> I mean, it's like, it's, 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 anyone who knows me, it's very on brand, so I just wanted to just go right there, you know? <laughs> um, and, and for, for MBA, I did graduate from CERN, so I did my MBA at CERN, um, uh, graduated two years ago. Awesome. Thanks, Julianne. Okay. Um, so, so, so sorry. Oh, thank God. Okay, so we were just going through a, a fire emergency here. We're safe. Don't worry. Um, they're relocating to oh, the no. floor. 
Um, anyway, sorry. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Bacho Cole. Um, I'm a principal in the San Francisco office in our leadership change and organization practice. Um, I've been with the firm uh, since I graduated from Georgetown about seven years ago. Um, I, I'm a music junkie. Um, as you can see from my fun fact, I used to be a singer-songwriter. Um, don't ask me to sing anything now. I won't do it. Um, but I love music, live music. Uh, you know, I've got all different manner of, of listening to music, Spotify stations, a record player, everything. Um, and my wife and I really... Sorry. You're so committed to diversity inclusion, you're willing to go through a fire. <laughs> yes, sorry. But anyway, so, uh, my, my wife and I are both strong advocates for social justice, diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, she brings a lot of work. Uh, she focuses a lot of her work on trans health, and uh, a lot of work that I do at H. Carney is focused on on DEI as well. Um, not not just internally and from a recruiting perspective, but the LCO practice. I'm actually leading an effort to build out um, a practice within LCO focused on DEI. Um, my favorite movie, yes, I love Jurassic Park. I watch it all the time. My wife even came home and found me watching it on Univision, even though my Spanish probably isn't that good. Um, and then finally, my fun fact, singer-songwriter, been thinking about trying to bring it back. Uh, Randy Carlisle's latest work but with the high women has made me want to start playing again. So anyway, thank you and sorry for the disruption there. Hi, everyone. Again, sorry for the hecticness in San Francisco. If it happens again, Bacho will break into song and dance. So, <laughs> um, so my name is Esther Anjaguna. I've been with the farm uh, now a month and a half. I interned here last summer and I came back um, full time uh, after completing my MBA at UCLA Anderson. Um, I'm very interested in sports. I love football, go Seahawks, and I'm a huge warrior fan of basketball. I love to travel, and I also really enjoy trash TV. If it's trash, I've seen it, I'm going to watch it. And yeah, uh, although my favorite TV shows are not trash, I love The Wire and The Office the American version of the office. <laughs> and my fun fact is that I learned how to fly a plane before I could drive a car. And the reason is I came here, came to the US, moved from Kenya to become a pilot. And I wasn't in the legal driving age when I was in Kenya. And so <laughs> I got here and started flying before I could drive. And that was a challenge. So, all right, well, I know how we're getting out of here in case that <laughs> fire starts up again. Esther, we'll have to fire up the I'll, jet. Fly you out. <laughs> okay, hey everyone, I'm Luis Suarez, associate out of the Chicago office. I am originally from Mexico City and did my undergrad in mining engineering in Madrid. Uh, after that, I worked in Mexico for a couple of years, did my MBA at Duke. My personal interests are a lot of sports and also a big fan of music, although I don't own a record player, but considering of buying one. Uh, my favorite movie is uh, The Royal Tenements, and uh, I find it very, very funny and entertaining. And my fun fact is that I ran with the Bulls in Pamplona, and that I was young, and one bad decision took me to the next, and yeah, I ended up running at 6 a.m. with the Bulls. You live to tell the tale, so that's a good sign. Yes. Awesome. Well, thanks everyone to the panelists for introducing themselves, and now we're gonna start to get into a couple of the questions. So Esther, I actually want to start with you since you just rejoined the firm after your summer. How did you know that a career in consulting was right for you? And also, how did you know that AT Kearney specifically was the right fit? 
Yeah, thanks, Caitlin. Um, so two parts, so the why consulting and then uh, why Itikani. And I wanted to go into consulting because of uh, three reasons. One, I had, um, you know, spent a lot of time in the aviation industry, and I really was looking to pivot into a career where I would work with different industries, doing different types of work. So I felt consulting would be a choice where I'd be able to do that work on different um, industries as well as apply different skill sets. And then two, I was looking for an opportunity where I could learn quickly and in an environment that was, you know, fast paced. <laughs> Um, okay, we're being evacuated, um, so we'll we'll rejoin on the phone when we get outside. Sorry, okay. <laughs> Sorry. We'll, come we'll rejoin back. outside. Playing out with my song and dance, Bacho. <laughs> Incredible timing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll uh, always talk it over to Julian and Louise while we're waiting for them to get back. Um, so, Louise, tell us a little bit about the diversity network that you're a part of, and what are some of the events that you do with them or you participate in with them? Yeah, so I am part of the Latino and Hispanic Network, and we have uh, some events that we do recruiting. We do other events that are just to build the community in the offices. So the last event that I participated in was a summer rooftop uh, get together. In we did one in New York and one in Chicago. I went to the one in in Chicago. We had the summer associates still, so uh, we got to learn more about them and get to know them better. Uh, we had just appetizers and some drinks and we could like have a fun even in on a Friday uh, when the weather was nice in Chicago. Ah, nice. Not, um, not, not too long ago. Nice. And Julian, let's, um, I'm going to ask you the same question. Can you tell us about your, the networks that you're involved in and also um, how do you think they've impacted your career at AT Kearney so far? Sure. Um, so I'm most involved in our women's network here at Kearney. And um, I think the women's network is doing a lot of really um, cool things at the moment. Um, there are some higher level things, especially um, with some of our, our senior leaders are working on um, in terms of looking at how we're sponsoring women um, and uh, kind of um, what, uh, what opportunities and um, pathways we can give to, to managers on up to make sure that they're progressing through the firm the way that, that they want to and that we are making sure they're well represented in leadership. Um, so there's been especially like lately a, a study on, on what we're calling like pivotal moments in women's careers here. Um, that's been cool to, to see develop. Um, and then there's just a lot of other, I think kind of um, an organic on the ground activity with the women's network. So one thing that I've worked on in the New York office has been um, this initiative focused specifically on more junior women. Um, I teamed up with a, a business analyst here for something that we call um, She for She. Um, and so like every month or two, we'll have these meetings in the New York office that are focused um, for generally managers on down. And we'll pick a topic that's been in the news recently and have um, discussions about it. And, and they're usually things that directly relate to, you know, our work as female consultants and just kind of our place as women in the workforce. So. Um, like last summer, for example, when if you remember Serena Williams at the um, at the U.S. Open, and there was this whole controversy about um, her kind of speaking up and advocating for herself, um, and uh, we read some of the the re reaction to that, and just kind of discussed like how that applies in a consulting setting and, and what we're doing in our own careers. Um, so, uh, so yeah, been been involved at like several different um, different levels that are going on. It's it's just kind of always um. It's fun to, to get involved and to be a part of driving some of that stuff forward. Um, and how often are you doing activities with the Women's Network? We typically do things um, once every month or two in New York. Um, we've been trying to do a pattern of, um, you know, 
ones will have kind of a, a more social engagement aspect. So we might go like off site for an evening on a Friday to go visit like a feminist art gallery. That was another fun one we did. Um, and then we'll have also like in office events that are um, around like engaging um, our colleagues or, or others, sometimes with just women, sometimes with male allies talking about um, the role that allies can play as well. Cause that's something that I think the firm is um, really building at its muscle there on, on the ally piece. And there are a lot of allies um, of different groups who want to know how they can, how they can help, how they can get involved. And so um, there have been people working on like general including programming pieces there as well. Um, have we talked about PARC yet? I, don't, I can talk about PARC if, um, if others haven't brought that up. No, no go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so beyond just the women's network, even there's this like broader scale inclusion effort um, that, that we're doing. Um, and one of the cornerstones of it is um, what we call the PARC program. It's people advocating for real change. And um, we've had sessions in every one of our um, North American offices um, that, that are PARC sessions. Several, some offices have done several rounds of this um, where there's a lot of kind of uh, very open sharing um, with the consultants to attend. And, and we try to get really good representation from senior leaders too. So it's partners on down to analysts sharing about um, kind of looking at different aspects of diversity and um, uniqueness in consulting and sometimes just um, even anonymously sharing uh, things that have happened or just kind of experiences we've had. And it's, it's been a really, um, I think, um, powerful and positive way for some people who maybe aren't as familiar with some of the barriers that certain groups face to, to come face to face with them and say like, wow, you know, even in a firm that we love and that we um, think they're great people around, like, you know, it's still not perfect and there are things that we need to work on. And then so I think that um, those events have been taking place over the last year and they've been really successful at building like a very solid level of awareness about certain things um, that I don't know um, was quite as uh, as robust before. And I think um, next year with PARC too, the objective there is to pivot more into talking about um, actions and, and kind of, uh, we've started the conversation on, okay, so what happens next with this, with this awareness, but, um, We'll be focused more on your kind of targeted things that people can do because there's a lot of energy and a lot of kind of leaders and others throughout the organization who care a lot and, and want to be really involved and focused on this. And so I think we're um, we're starting to do a really nice job of harnessing that energy, but there's there's still kind of always room to grow on this point for us than anyone else, I would say. So any others want to chime yeah. in? Are happy on that too? Yeah. Yeah, I totally agree. I participated in um, a lot of the PARC programs and like a big focus on unconscious bias, understanding that, how you overcome it. Um, and I'm also part of the leadership training as well, where like we teach, we teach leaders to think about like how do they cascade like pop diversity and inclusion down to their teams, right, to make sure that we're advocating within our teams um, for diversity. So I think it's great. Luis, have you participated in any of the PARC events in the offices? No, actually, I haven't, but I'm, it's definitely one thing that I'm, I'm wanting to do. Awesome. Um, and then maybe I'll ask both of you this question, too. You know, is there anything that you wish you had known about the diversity network or um, about the firm before you started? Would it have changed anything you thought about the firm? Is there anything that you found surprising once you joined the diversity network? Hmm. So I'm thinking about this one. I don't know that I do. Um, I, uh, I I feel like maybe this is just also because I interned here. Um, I was an intern in the summer of 2016, and um, I felt like because I came and interned, I got a really solid look at what the company was like, what it would be like to work here, and what it would be like to plug in to all the different things that are going on outside of our main projects. Um, so uh, I don't know, like, I, I guess um, it was a good thing. Like I, I knew when I was signing on the dotted line for my offer, you know, like what I was signing up for and, and that has like largely been borne out. Um, I think that um, maybe it's just like one small thing for me that um, it's just that the level of like support and mentorship I've received from several women at the firm has been just like absolutely phenomenal. Um, and. Uh, I've, um, you know, more than just, oh, well, let me just ask this person for a quick piece of advice. Like, there are women who have really um, invested in me, invested in my career, and really, you know, like, advocated for me in certain places, um, and that I've been able to rely on them a ton for, 
like really, really um, sort of personal and, and um, meaningful feedback on just like my path and overall journey here. So um, that has been like there, there are maybe two or three people I'm thinking of in particular who have just like really been those people for me. Um, and uh, that's been like so awesome. That's great to hear. Yeah. Um, yes, and on, on that point, uh, I think, yeah, once you join the firm, it's super important to uh, try to get these mentorship relationships starting. And one of the easiest ways or, or one of the best ways, I would say, and, and also the way that I, and, and where I've been at the firm and the projects that I've done come from uh, these relationships with, within the LHN network. So I think, yeah, it's definitely super, super important and a great way to en to engage with these these diversity groups and not and and also not just uh, be engaged in the overall activities like like uh, that the firm the firm is doing. Like you can always be an ally of of another network and and just be belong to to other ones. Yeah. I love that point, right? The idea of like we belong to, we may have a core network or a couple of core networks that we belong to, but we're allies to many other networks. And I think one of the cool things the firm has done recently is there's been a big push to have ally pledges. So like our proud network had an ally pledge that um, I signed to stand with, that I stand with proud. And then we also had the women's network signed one as well. So like. When you see that, it's not just like when you're in a network, it's not just you and the network and the others who are in your network. I think you feel like the whole community and the whole firm supporting you as part of that. And I'm so happy to see that we have Botchel and Esther back. Hi, uh, we're safe. Welcome, we're safe. guys. Good. <laughs> we didn't want you guys to disappear in a fire, so we're glad you're, we're glad, we're glad you're evacuated and you're back. Um, and we're going through a couple of the, we were just talking about basically like which diversity networks we're part of and um, and I, I had asked the question if there was, if you wish you had known anything about the diversity networks before you joined the firm, like something that you learned about them or that changed your impression of AT Carney that you wish you had known before you started. Um, that's a really great question and I, you know, I was thinking about it. Um, I think I think what I when I came in I had a view of well the research groups are nice there's something they're more social they're more like for me to get together with people um, that you know are from communities like my own um, and then I think you know what I've gotten to know since I've been here and sort of been more involved is it's way more than that um, especially in a job like consulting which is such a you know, a, a, it's a job based on relationships and based on your networks. And what I found is that, you know, being a member of the of the Proud Network, being a member of the, the South Asian Network, um, and, you know, being an ally to the Women's Network and an ally to the African American Network and the Hispanic Network, it, you get to know people and you get to build networks that help you both personally and professionally. Um, and actually it's something where in the Proud Network, I drive, I'm leading one of the pillars um, about driving inclusion, and we're, we're working on an effort to um, make it easier for those of us that, that have different intersections of diversity, access the networks, and sort of leverage, you know, the fact that, like, I could attend, you know, any number of events, so how can we help make my intersectionality um, you know, and connect with other folks in the firm who have different aspects of their identity that, um, you know, make up their full authentic self. So I think there's a lot of, you know, we, we're constantly looking for ways to make these networks even more powerful for, for members and allies, uh, which I love about, about the firm is constantly trying to learn and, and be better. I have a couple more questions I want to probe, but Lauren, I wanted to stop just to see if there's any specific questions you've gotten so far that you want to cover before we, we go into the others. Why don't you keep going with a couple more? I think maybe we have one or two. So we'll we'll go with these and then I'll let, I'll jump in after that. Okay, awesome. Um, so I'm interested for the panelists. I know like we do a lot of off-site events for our network groups. Like so recently I participated in the women's 
work event that was in Chicago where we had dinner with all the partners on a Thursday night, and then on Friday we had a full-day working session that was really focused on developing women, increasing your presence, and increasing your confidence. So I was wondering if you guys can speak a little bit, and I know like um, Proud had a great event um, a few weeks ago, uh, and I think also the African-American, uh, I think, um, network had something maybe like a week or two ago. I was just wondering if you guys could talk a little bit about those type of events and what the focus is for those. Yeah, I mean, I'm happy to start. The, the Proud Network had an offsite in Colorado in Vail. Um, and, you know, it was actually, it was able to, we were able to be joined by David Hanflam, who's the head of the Americas, which is just such a strong show of support from our leadership. Um, and the, the purpose of the weekend was really to get the group together and think about, uh, you know, who we wanted to be as an organization, where are we, you know, where are we falling short, where can we do better, and, and where, where do we want to be in a year from now, three years from now, five years from now. So it was a little bit of a, like a strategic planning uh, weekend as well, and we invited allies, and it was, you know, um, it was a really powerful event and something that I think we're going to try and do in the future as well. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I, I also um, can I, oh, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say I I um I attended the crowd retreat as an ally and it was um it was so awesome to just to be there to kind of listen and engage and and um like having those conversations with people and like watching the way that like crowd is structuring everything now. Um, yeah, it's like it's really, really just phenomenally done weekend. And I think like everyone who was there just came away feeling like, oh my gosh, like there's so many people at this firm who um, like care about like making this a place that everyone feels comfortable where we can all truly, truly be ourselves. And, and like there was so much energy directed towards that purpose from like very high level people who have like very busy day jobs anyway. So um, it's like one of those like proud to be at this firm moments for me, no pun intended. <laughs> um, I, I'll share also, I had a particularly proud moment about a year ago when um, we were helping a client build up like their new executive leadership team. And we had a really diverse team, um, like both in terms, like both in terms of um, like a lot of like both equal men and women, a lot of diverse backgrounds. Um, and great thought leadership. And when the client was developing their executive teams, one of the things they said to us is like, we look at the diversity that you guys have in your team, and we want to emulate that in the way we think about our executive structure, which was something totally different because they really didn't have a lot of diversity. So like I find that like because we live and breathe diversity, that trickles onto our clients in a lot of ways, which has um, been something that's been sort of like a, a little bit mind opening for me. Um, and I want to ask you guys too. I mean, in the in the scheme of um, the diversity networks, but maybe just in the firm of, uh, or maybe just in general, like what do you think is is unique about H Carney? Maybe in terms of from a diversity lens, like what do you think we do differently, um, or just maybe what do you love about the firm? Um, Can I take a crack at that one? Oh. Um, no, go ahead, Julie. Yeah, um, so I was going to say um, I um, love the way that um, the opportunities we have here to plug directly into a lot of this, like, really important work that is going on. Um, I um, apologies for anyone who has met me in this recruiting process before who's on this call because I say this a lot, but um, I really think that we're, like, a, a Goldilocks size firm and that we're not too big and we're not too small. Um, and uh, when the, the not too um, big part comes in because um, you can really get to know your colleagues, you can form really close bonds with people in your own office and across offices, and then there's tons of room for um, consultants, even very new consultants, to plug directly into a lot of the broader work that goes on at the firm. And there's so much room, um, I think, to um, take ownership of things and to drive things like diversity and inclusion forward. Um, I think the She for She events that I mentioned um, that I do with the Women's Network, that was um, not in place when I got here. That was just something that I teamed up with a business analyst who's really passionate about this. And we said, we want to do this. And people later said, sure, that sounds great. And then we just kind of ran and, and did. Um, and, I, and I think that um, 
that that freedom and, and that kind of level of um, input and steering is something that is like a really unique opportunity at Kearney that makes me just like really glad to be at this firm. That's awesome. I love the description of like we're sort of like a Goldilocks firm. I'm totally stealing that. I love it. <laughs> I totally You're totally welcome. <laughs> and Lauren, I saw that we have a couple questions coming in, so I don't know if we want to shift to those so we make sure we answer them. Yeah, thanks. Um, actually, Caitlin, if you don't mind, I'll ask you this one. Um, how does diversity and inclusion play into the work of cases and projects that you're involved with? Um, I think one example is, right, I gave the example of how, like, when we, the, the example I just gave, like, how we brought a diverse team to the client, and that really rubbed off on the clients, and they walked away thinking, like, we actually need more women, we need more minorities, like, we need some diversity in our executive team. So that was, I think, a really proud moment for me. Um, I think one of the other pieces, too, is that when we have diversity on our teams, and we have diverse clients as well, right, so the opposite, it allows us to just better interact and better relate to our clients. So I've, I've seen a lot of instances where when we've staffed first teams and there's a certain client member who has, uh, like, you know, one set of interests and we bring in a consultant who has a similar set of interests, it changes, can change the whole course of the project. It can change the way we work with them. It can change um, the ideas that we bring to them, their receptiveness to those ideas, and then also it can lead to more, um, more work after we finish a project, right? So uh, we would develop a better longer-term relationship with them. So I, I mean, I, I didn't, I guess maybe when I was more junior, I didn't understand how important it was, but now like when I, every time I staff a team, I always think about, you know, how do I bring diversity and how do I make sure that it's a team that's going to work well with the client, but also like bring diversity of thought and challenge the client a little bit. Yeah, and Lauren, right. maybe, maybe to add, you know, just the, sure, you know, as I've come into the principal role and sort of started to take, um, you know, take my space as one of the leaders in the firm and really think about how that impacts the work that I want to do. Um, I've gotten tremendous support from, from partners. So, for example, uh, I, I wrote an article recently on, the, on customer inclusion and the, the customer experience for the non-binary customer today, which is really quite frustrating at most times. Um, and Greg Portel, who's the head of our trip practice, um, was a huge sort of advocate in helping me shape that article and getting it published. And we're actually now doing some targeted retail surveys about, you know, how, you know, are people spending their money, where are they spending their money, and how does that relate to their values and, and their, who they are and their identity? And so it's like, you know, I think the firm really understands that it's, it's, it's a, that 360-degree view, like Caitlin said. What, view, what, what signals are we sending into the world by who we are? How can we help other people think through the things we've been thinking through? What are customers going through? What are future employees going through? What are our alumni going through? And having that view, I think, in combination with the other thing that I love about H. Carney is we're also willing to, to admit where we fall short and where we need more work. And I think our current CEO, uh, Alex Wu, has been very straightforward in that. Um, and that, I think, you know, for me, it feels like over the last seven years, I've really seen the firm come into its own, and I'm excited about where we're headed from a DEI perspective. Yeah. Thanks for sharing, Blackville. It was a great article. I had the chance to read it. So thank you. Uh, I also <laughs> read it. It was awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If you haven't read it, as you can right, Blackville? What's that? Oh, it's. it's, it's Anyone on the webinar wants to read it, they can probably find it on your LinkedIn, right? Yes. Thank you, Caitlin. <laughs> my, my PR, my PR team. <laughs> <laughs> Not getting paid, it's um, free. <laughs> <laughs> Esther, I'd love to direct the next question to you as uh, the one who is most recent to come through the recruiting process. What yeah. advice would you give prospective students applying to consulting roles that identify with these diversity groups? Good question. I think, yeah, that's a really good question. Um, I think first and foremost, 
acknowledging that the recruiting process is very rigorous and it's tough and it happens really quickly and you almost don't get a chance to realize what you really want. It just happens and you find yourself at a farm. Um, but I, I would encourage you all to take a moment away from the noise and focus on who you really are and what you're looking for, whether it's in a career in consulting and what type of farm you're looking for. So prioritize what is important to you, who you are and what type of career you envision, and then start looking at the farms that come to campus that you, know, you reach out to using that lens. And that way you'll be able to identify places where you fit in, that you think you can grow, that you feel, you know, are destined to be a place to grow your career in consulting. I think, um, you know, really taking time and, and being honest with yourself during this whole recruiting process is something that I wish I could have told myself. Um, going through the process, it's not all about, you know, recruit, recruit, recruit. You have to take a moment and really figure out what's important to you. And I think you'll be able to realize some of the farms are really different. AT Kearney stands out uh, for different factors from um, other consulting firms. And I think that will really help you, um, you know, in making that decision. And uh, right. you know, we, we were very excited when Esther decided to rejoin us in San Francisco. <laughs> Um, and we've, uh, you know, it was great to have you involved and come to the All Hands all event. Hands, in San, yeah. uh, you know, we had a, a, a firm-wide All Hands in San Antonio, and it was great to have uh, our, a few of our summer associates come back and join us. And we really do, it really is a family, and once you're in, you know, you're, you're definitely in. Great. I have one more question that I'm going to direct to Luis. But then after that, would ask for a lightning round for you each to answer your one piece of advice, maybe one or two sentences. So you can be thinking. In the meantime, Louise, um, we'd love to learn more about the mentorship and coaching that you found most valuable, either through the networks you're a part of or just when you began at AT Kearney. Yes, yeah, so I think Mentorship, in my case, did come from the Latino and Hispanic event. And actually, so my story is that I transferred from Mexico City. And, but since, and, and this point has been touched in this conversation, like the firm is not too big that I worked with people from the U.S. and part of the LHN. And then in, in, for personal reasons, I wanted to transfer and, and like have that happen pretty easily. So that was like a very a good experience uh, for me and like that the firm supported like my personal interest, et cetera. So I think uh, it, is, it is, yeah, very, very important to, to build those mentorship relationships and to find people that you connect. It doesn't have to be within the, the same like diversity networks, but uh, just it, it's super important to build these these connections, and in the end, I think that's what I've been trying to prioritize in the work that I've been doing, and and trying to find the people that I like to work with, and trying to just uh, find a combination between like the projects, the people, etc. Yeah, definitely. Thanks for sharing that. All right, speed round here. Caitlin, we'll start with you, and then we'll move down the line based on the screen here. Advice that you would have for our MBA one? Uh, I think the more authentic you can be in the interview process, the more successful you'll be, because you'll have a natural connection with the people that you're meeting at the firm, and you'll know that they, like, it'll be an easier process, but you also know like it's the right fit for you um, because you get along with them. So try to be your authentic self. I know it's not always easy when you're going through it, but the more you can do that, the more you know you, that you'll end up in the right place. Thank you. Julianne? Uh-oh. We lost Julianne. She has no more advice. <laughs> I'm sure you're up. <laughs> Um, sorry, uh, <laughs> Julian was like, nope, you've got all my advice, I'm out of here. Um, 
Yeah, you know, uh, my I think my advice is similar to Esther. That you know, you uh, you know yourself better than anyone, um, and I think we can all get caught up in a lot of hype about what we should want um, in a firm and what we should want in a job and in a career. Um, and I think you know we're living in a world where there's there's so many different opportunities to, to create your own path. And I'd say that's one thing I really like about H. Kearney from a size and reach perspective is it feels very entrepreneurial. Um, I think we actually refer to ourselves as like one of the oldest startups or something like that. I've heard people say that. And so, you know, um, my, my advice would be, you know, at the end of the day, um, it's that balance of finding the work that keeps you interested, uh, but also the life that keeps you happy and healthy. Um, and so, you know, make sure to keep your priorities, your priorities, family, friends, health, happiness, all that stuff. And I think it'll it'll help guide you to the right place. Cool. Thanks. Hey, this is Esther. this is Julianne. I am back. If you can hear me, <laughs> can you hear me? Hi, everyone. Yeah. I'm yeah. here. <laughs> Um, well, Julian, it's funny we love your one last piece of advice. Yes, it's not dissimilar to what's come before, but I always say when you're applying to consulting, um, apply as yourself. Um, you know, be professional, show that you've got the, the course skills to do the job really well, but then also don't flood the edges of what makes you different when you're in that process, because what makes you different can actually make you stand out more. And it's something that the firm is really eager for a whole range of different kinds of people to to be here and to bring those experiences and just even different personalities into the firm. So uh, to let that, whatever that is for you, like shine through and, and um, you'll position yourself as strongly as you can. Thanks. Esther, anything to add? You shared some. Uh, yeah. Business school is crazy. Uh, use your time wisely. You don't have to go to all the events. It's okay. <laughs> Take care of yourself. And <laughs> stay, really stay true to who you are. Yeah. Great. Louise, close us out. Yeah, so uh, take advantage of, of this time that you're uh, in business school to get to know people, get to know people in the firms. Like everyone is going to be interested to to talk to you and, and just get a very good understanding of of what you want for your future and and uh, because if you can, like if you can do the summer internship that's great uh, better than coming full time because that's the way you will get the full experience of being in the job and and everything so I mean it's it's important for your next step in life. Great, thank you. Um, so with that, I'd like to thank all of our panelists and Caitlin for moderating and sharing the upfront um, notes before. Um, we have a few upcoming webinars for you that you can see here, Social Impact on November 5th, and then a few interview prep webinars, um, November 14th and 15th, and all of our panelists' contact information there. Again, if we didn't have a chance to answer your question, careers.mba at atcarney.com. Otherwise, thank you all for joining us on a Friday, and enjoy your weekend. Bye, everyone. Thanks. Thanks. Bye. Happy Friday. Nacho, we're waiting for the song. Bye. Oh, darn, we ran out of time. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye.